On June 18, the Supreme Court, in a 5-4 to four decision, rejected the Trump administration effort to terminate the DACA program, saying it was arbitrary and capricious. That's the program established by President Obama to protect young immigrants, called DREAMers, who were brought to America as children by their families from being deported. Carlos Laredo, a Myrtle Beach restaurant manager, is one of those dreamers. I have made a life in here. I manage a restaurant. You know, I wouldn't know anybody back there. So this is a great relief for now, and it's freedom for us. Venusia Lipinski is a Myrtle Beach immigration attorney who works with dreamers and other immigrants. Who does the DACA program benefit, and why is it important? Yeah, the DACA program benefits kids, young people who came in with their parents without status, without their permission, when they were little. And they are in the United States, they are working here, they're creating businesses, they're entrepreneurs, um, they're a part of a society, they're paying taxes. This is, this is their country. They have not been back to their country of birth since they came. I've been in this country for almost 20 years. And this is the only country that I know. I, was, I came here when I was nine. I don't know any other home. I might be born in a different country, but this is my home, this is my country. Money, not only are they contributing to our tax base, they're also creating jobs. I have several clients who are entrepreneurs who have, who have their own businesses. And even those that are working in other companies, they are many times supervisors or managers and they have U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents that are working underneath them. Absolutely, we are, they are contributing to the economy, not only in taxes, not only in employment, but they're also consumers. They're trying to buy houses, they're, um, they pay property tax, they pay tax on their goods, and so there's, there are a tremendous boon to our economy. Also, I wanna just also add that without the DREAMers, without the DACA recipients, uh, a lot of businesses wouldn't have replacement workers. Uh, does the court's decision mean that the DACA program is here to stay? Uh, no, I wish that it did. <laughs> it didn't go to the constitutionality of whether DACA was, was within the bounds of law or not. It was more a decision under the uh, Administrative Procedure Act. So we don't know what it's going to do. It, it said that the rescission though was, was, not, was not valid um, because it was arbitrary and capricious. They did not take a look at the other factors in making a decision about whether it should be rescinded or not. And so their reasoning behind why they were rescinding it was basically faulty. Do you think uh, Trump will try to terminate it? Yeah, he's, he's, he said as much on, on Friday, he said that he was going to terminate it, that he was going to rescind it that now that he had the pathway, according to the Supreme Court, on what he needed to do, that he was going to do it right this time, which is interesting. Um, but, but even if he does issue another executive order, because a lot of the immigration decisions do seem to be by executive order, uh, because the law is pretty clear on, what, on, who they, on who is supposed to be protected and who is not supposed to be protected. Um, but yes, I think that he will probably try to do another um, another rescission order, executive order rescinding it. Um, but even then, that's going to be challenged. I'm certain that's going to be challenged, and then it's going to go back to the Supreme Court. I think, I think we're going to have this for, I think we're going to have DACA as it is, as uncertain as it is for a while. Meantime, can people submit applications for the first time? Well, we are waiting to get some clarification about whether they can or not from the uh, USCIS, from immigration. There are some lawyers, some individuals that are submitting applications right now. Uh, that is certainly not the recommendation that I would suggest at this point. Let's, let, we should be, we should, they should be able to because it basically rescinds the executive order, which means that we go back to the 2012 executive order by President Obama. Uh, and so USCIS should basically roll back to that time and we are anticipating that we will have, that people will be able to apply anew 
um, as soon as we get some guidance from USCIS. But they have to like rebuild their system. They have to like reinstitute it and create a process where new applicants can apply. Okay, so if they already have DACA, can they renew it? Now they can renew it. I'm, right, so nothing has changed. For those that already have it, yes, they can renew it. Okay. And I strongly suggest those that are eligible, as we did before, to renew it. Okay. Now I understand there's something called advanced parole. What does that mean and, and how does that play into this decision? Yeah, so advanced parole, which is what we had under the initial or the original 2012 order, meant that people could go back with permission from the government um, to go back to their home countries and visit families, grandparents, people that they hadn't seen for many, many, many years. Um, and so they could do that under the prior order. Uh, advanced parole is a really, is a wonderful benefit for people who, I mean, not only so that they can go back and visit their families and touch base in their countries of birth, but when they come back in, that's also considered a valid entry. And so when it's a valid entry for people who have other means of adjusting status or of being here, for example, if they're married to a U.S. citizen, they could then use that entry to change their status in the United States without having to leave. How do they get advanced parole? There's a form that's called an I-131 that's available on the USCIS website. Uh, we do not yet know whether people will be able to apply for advanced parole. Again, we're thinking that they should because under the 2012 executive order um, that was permissible. And I mean, of course, the USCIS had implemented that. So um, we're hoping again that people can apply for that, even those that are currently, that currently have DACA. Uh, but again, I think that the wisest thing is just to wait and let's see what the rollout is from the US, from USCIS. So what needs to happen to make certain that DACA isn't attacked again? It needs to become part of the law. I mean, we need to allow, we need to make changes to our immigration law. And I think that the, the uh, House has already passed a bill ready to be taken to the Senate for signature, and then eventually the President for signature, um, that basically would allow youngsters, young people that came into the United States before they were 16 years old to get legal status. So it needs to become a part of the law so that we're not constantly hanging people up, causing a lot of emotional distress, not only to them, to their families, to their children, to their employers. Um, so you can only imagine what it must be like for young people who really, who know no other country, some, some of whom didn't even know that they were here without status. They're integrated, they're part of this culture, but to not know that they could change at any time can cause a lot of emotional stress, depression, PTSD. So we really need to make it a permanent part of our immigration laws, and there's no reason not to do it um, other than the will of Congress. So the House already has a bill. I think that people in the community, employers that need these workers, um, workers that are employed by their DACA um, supervisors, um, members of the community, and again, 75% approximately uh, approve of the DACA program, why not make it part of the law? So we need to let our senators know, we need to let the president know, um, and hopefully um, in November there will be more hope. This is a huge relief because I think a lot of people did not expect this. And so, again, it was under not a constitutional challenge, but under the Administrative Procedures Act that they didn't follow their, their own guide, guidance. Um, they didn't say it was good or bad, but they did talk about the reliance that a lot of these um, dreamers have on their status and their ability to work and to pay taxes and to drive and just to be here with their loved ones. So what happens in the November election will have a lot to say about the future of this program, I would say. Well, um, I would think, I mean, if, if President Trump is reelected, um, I think that he will do whatever he can to rescind the program. Although I did also hear um, from maybe the press secretary that they were going to be compassionate. Right. Um, but again, the, the good right. news is, is that for right now, at least, dreamers are safe. I would love to be able to allow those that have not yet applied to be able to apply because there are so many that are still here that would benefit from this program, that would also benefit our economy um, and the communities in which they live.